Hi guys. So we all have our individual wishes, dreams, and goals, and we all want certain things to happen in our lives. But then we can get distracted or go on autopilot on a daily basis, which doesn't help us move toward our dreams. But we do have the power to move toward our dreams and our wishes and our goals if we can clarify what we want and then focus on it. It's the accumulation of the small actions that we take on a daily basis that has the power to take us where we want to go and has a huge effect on our lives. So today I'll review this book with you, or rather booklet. Yay! It's actually really, really awesome and has a simple methodology on how to bring your goals, dreams, and desires to life. The simplicity of the method in this book is my favorite part. Although simplicity isn't always synonymous with easy, but oftentimes simple solutions can be incredibly effective. Anyways, it's an interesting concept, so let's get right into it. So this little booklet was first published in 1926, and it says that the author was a successful, generous, and helpful man. He wished to remain anonymous and goes by the initials RHJ. Starting with one of the most important points of the book, the author speaks briefly of thoughtless talkers and wishers. And he suggests that we be more mindful about the thoughts that we have and the verbiage that we speak. So sometimes what we say and think doesn't exactly support what we need or want. So speaking mindfully is important. Our minds and our thoughts and the words that we use and also our actions, all of it's very powerful. Sometimes we can underestimate how much we can impact our lives as well as others. So that's the first important point that he makes. Then he goes on to say that we should also identify what we want. The author writes that, first of all, you must know what you want and that is no easy task. So he's saying to identify what you want and then tune into it. And he suggests that there's a mighty power within each of us if we just know what we want and then tune into it. We can get distracted or be wishy-washy on the things that we want. So he explains that when we do that, things aren't as likely to come to fruition. So then the author says to write down on paper everything that you want in order of importance. Then after you've done that, there's a three-step process. The first is to look at your list three times a day, morning, noon, and night. The second is to think about what you want as often as possible. And the third is to not talk to anybody about your plan. I think it's interesting that he says not to talk to anybody about it because you go inwards as opposed to seeking external validation and external validation can help you or hurt you depending on who you're talking to. He also says there's no need to analyze how the power within you will accomplish these desires. He says doing so is as unnecessary as trying to figure out how corn grows, so just do it without questioning it and be grateful when things come to fruition. So near the end of the book, the author also puts a caution and he says you can have what you want, but you must take all that goes with it. So in planning your wants, plan that which you are sure will give you and your fellow man the greatest good here on earth, thus paving the way to that future hope beyond the pale of human understanding. So he puts a caution in there that what you want shouldn't harm anybody. It should be good for you and good for others. And I really like how he put that in there. So the author also mentions to do good for others. And you know, with this making a list, I think it's a great opportunity to bring you back to who am I and what do I want? In this fast paced and information filled world, to have a blank piece of paper in front of you where you can list everything that you want for your life, it represents a world of possibilities. I think it's a fun exercise and I also think it's important to sit down once in a while and think about these things. Also, how can you touch somebody's heart and life and leave your imprint on the world? Some people say I'm just a clerk or a cashier or a customer service rep, but in terms of humanity, people who are in front of other people and interact with others daily are in the most powerful positions. They have so much power. They have the power to uplift somebody's day and it's a very important position to be in. We're talking about this book here. It works, but it actually reminded me of one small part of this book, which I love, Emotional Intelligence. Emotional Intelligence starts out with a story and it starts out about a hot, steamy afternoon in New York City and there's a bus driver who is jolly and happy and positive and greets every passenger that gets on with a smile. 
and the author says the bus driver is greeting all the passengers and he says each passenger was as startled as I and locked into the morose mood of the day few returned his greeting and then he goes on to say as the bus starts moving through the city the bus driver is almost giving a commentary on different landmarks and different exhibits different sales at different stores and he says his delight in the rich possibilities the city offered was infectious. By the time people got off the bus, each in turn had shaken off the soul and shell that they had entered with, and when the bus drivers shouted out, so long, have a great day, each gave a smiling response. Then Daniel Goleman, the author, he goes on to say that the memory of that encounter has stayed with me for close to 20 years. And that's the power that we have as humans to affect one another. So there's this beautiful quote, and it says, thousands of candles can be lit from a single candle. Happiness never decreases by being shared. We as human beings are ephemeral. In 150 years, it's likely that everyone around us will be gone and replaced by a new generation, ourselves included, and will be but a memory. So on this list, what legacy do you want to leave? What good do you want to do in your life while we're here? Making this list gives us a great opportunity to think about that and explore that. And I actually love this method because it's a simple list that you can carry around with you anywhere. It's also simple and there's a beauty to that. There's some great productivity advice that I received recently and it was to choose three items for the week and just focus on three things that you want to get done instead of writing out the little action steps, which I, I've been doing, and now I'm experimenting with this new method, it's just three major things, and what are three things do I wanna get done this week, and just focus on those. And then even if it takes 100 steps to get there, if you just get those three done, you feel accomplished, and then also three for the day. So this list kind of reminds me of that. It's actually been working really well for me, but this list reminds me of that because you put the end outcome of your goal on this list and then it might be hundreds or thousands of little actions that you have to take to reach that goal. But if you're always reading your list and it's consistently in front of you, then every day I think you start to take small steps and reach those goals because your actions are aligned knowing that you want to meet those goals. As a writer, I also think words and text have a lot of power, and especially when you handwrite them. There's a lot of like intention and meaning in handwriting. I'm also a huge believer of Kaizen, which is a Japanese methodology for the power of small things. So for instance, my friend Ryan and I were doing the plank for 30 seconds a day for a month to see what happens. And I'm already noticing like a pretty big difference. So, I might make a video on that if you're interested. And also as a professional organizer, when I go into clients' homes and we clear a bunch of little things, the cumulative difference just makes such a big difference in the feel and the aesthetic of a house. So I do believe in his methodology because if you clarify what you want, then consistently focus on your goals, you'll make strides to achieve them. He also mentions one other very important point. He speaks of our objective minds being susceptible to suggestion, and he says that it is almost impossible to make any satisfactory progress when surrounded by skeptics. Therefore, choose your friends carefully, and don't discuss this with anyone. And the beauty of the book also is that the book ends with this. Great is the reward to those who help and give without thought of self, as it is impossible to be unselfish without gain. So just in case you're interested, if you want to buy this book, I'll link it down in the description below. I checked today and at the time of this filming, it's $3.99 on Amazon. And I think it's just a pretty cool, powerful little book that I wanted to share with you. So do you think that you'll try it? And have you ever heard of this book before? In terms of investment versus profit, I think it's a pretty cool proposition. Let me know in the comments. And please give this video a like if it was fun, informative, or helpful. It helps more people find my channel and I'd really appreciate it. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more content on your home, writing, or wellness. Thank you for watching and see you next week.